Hi, I'm Phil Constantine on this episode of Travels with Phil. Going to be talking about reservations that are required in lots of national park scenic areas, those kinds of places. Not just a reservation for like a campsite or something like that. You may actually need a reservation for a timed entry in a couple of spots because there's so many people going there, it's just getting so crowded, they're actually limiting the number of people that are going in. And then other places need them on certain times of the year. I'll give you a list of all the parks that I could find that have these kinds of requirements. And they're all over the country. So let's start off here. Acadia, the Conchiti Day Use Area has tickets. Ape Cave up in Washington requires it. Now Arches National Park up in Utah may require a timed entry ticket anywhere in the park. Some of these are just for certain trails. Other spots, Boulder Cave, Brainerd Lake Recreational Area, the Breezy Point Off-Road Vehicle Inspection, Cadillac Summit Road Vehicle Registration, the Dog Mountain Trail, El Yunque National Forest, Glacier National Park, that one may require it everywhere in the park. Halalea Kala National Park, I couldn't pronounce that right, Independence Hall in Philadelphia, the Indian Peaks Wilderness Overnight and Large Group Day Use require reservations. Jacob Reese Park, Daily Beach Parking. The Kasha Kutue Tent Rocks National Monument. Kilauea Point National Wildlife Refuge. Lava River Cave. Lewis River Recreation Area. Mount Evans Recreation Area. The Muir Woods National Monument. Multnomah Falls, right in Oregon, right off the Columbia River. The National Archives in Washington, D.C., not necessarily a park, but a building that may have some uh, timed entry requirements. Red Rock Canyon Scenic Drive, there's lots of spots in Red Rock that may require it, different spots out there that have timed entry. Red Springs Picnic Area. The Rocky Mountain National Park, that may actually have timed entry throughout the entire park. Other spots out there, San Gabriel Canyon, off-road vehicles, Shenandoah National Park, Old Rag Mountain, Silver Glen Springs Recreational Area, the wave on the border between Utah and Arizona, Tim Poonake Trailhead, Tuweep Area Day Use, Valles or Valles Caldera National Preservation Backcountry, the Washington Monument, you're going to go up to the top, Yosemite National Park has several spots that may require timed entry. And Zion National Park has a couple of places. Specifically, Angel's Landing has a spot where they're only letting so many people go up the trail because the trail is so narrow. So these are just some spots out there. You can see websites here, which I will add in the description field as well, which will list some of the spots out there that may require them. Now, in some of these cases, it's first come, first serve, obviously and they are only going to let you do it for a certain period of time in advance. A lot of these may be opening up like three months in advance. So if, for example, if you want to go in April, you're going to have a chance to start registering in January the 2nd. And if they have a limited number, you first come first serve, you may not be able to get in. So you have to get in here for her. You have to get in here very early. May reservations start in February, June reservations start in March, July reservations start in April, August reservations start in May, September reservations start in June, and October reservations start July 1st. And basically, so again, three months in advance is when they start allowing people to get reservations. And again, if these are first come, first serve, and only a limited number, literally, you may not be able to get into the place you want to go. And if you could show up right at the very front of the park or show up at the front door, and they may not let you in if you don't have one of these reservations or proof that you've got one of these reservations. Now, there's all kinds of National Park Service units. There are national battlefields, there are battlefield parks, there are battlefield sites, there's national military parks, national historic parks, 63 of those, by the way. Also have national historic sites, which are slightly different. There are 74 of those. There are international historic sites, only one of those, St. Croix Island International Site up in Maine. Have national lake shores, national seashores, national rivers, national wild and scenic rivers and riverways. There's the national scenic trails, there's three of those. There are national memorials, 31, national parkways, four, I have a video on one of them. 
and national monuments. There are 84 there are more national monuments than any other section of the national park system. National recreational areas, there are 18. National preserves, there's 19. National reserves, there's two. And the national parks, there are 63 of those. And there's uh, 11 other spots that are just called other park designations because they have a problem fitting them into a category. So you really need to check and see in advance if you plan on going somewhere to make sure you're going to be able to get in. And you can also go to recreation.gov to get these reservations online and you can pay for uh, entry in advance. Now, even if you have the timed entry or you know you have the permission to be there, you may also you will probably also have to pay the entry fee as well. But you can pay the entry fee when you get there for some of these parks. Some of them you do have to pay in advance and use the online systems. So just keep that in mind if you're going to any of these spots. And I always recommend you check online. Some of these are on a trial basis. Some of these seem to be uh, ongoing. And some of them they may decide to drop uh, after a certain period of time. And some of them are only during certain times of the year. For example, arches may only be during the summer months when everybody tries to go there and it just gets so crowded. All right, I'm Phil Constantine. Thanks for watching. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please feel free to make comments below as long as the language is family friendly. And if you like this video, please click on the thumbs up button below. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the circle with my picture in it in the lower right hand corner of the video. The arrow is pointing at it now. And once you have subscribed, you can be notified of when I have a new video posted by clicking on the bell icon in the description field below the video. Thanks again for watching.